media recognition from Bloomberg, Reuters, recycling trade publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals, including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the US, AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Joseph Schachter, founder of the Schachter Energy Report online at ShachterEnergyReport.ca. He's speaking to us from Calgary. Welcome back to the show, Joseph. My pleasure. Good to be with you again, Jim. Joseph, U.S. crude oil and product consumption fell in the EIA report this week by 11%. How come? Well, you've got um, a number of states that have uh, reversed their reopenings, and um, you know, and so there there was a decline of you know 2.2 million barrels, an 11% decline in one week to 17.2 million, and it's down uh, 3.8 million, um, 18% from a year ago. Um, so we're looking at uh, softer demand. And again, we're within two weeks of the end of the summer driving season. And once that's over, demand even falls even more from that. So likely we're going to see um, a pickup in storage uh, starting September, maybe the second half of September, and then October, November. And then once winter demand picks up, then, of course, uh, storage will come down again. But the problem is OPEC, as of August 1st, um, has, has increased their production by 2 million barrels a day. So they were, they cut back 9.7 because of COVID. Um, they're going to be a 7.7, which, uh, the extra 2 million will come on, uh, during the softer shoulder season of the fall. That could be problematic. And in the most recent, uh, OPEC report that came out a week ago, um, the, uh, July, uh, production numbers show 23.2 million up 980,000 of which Saudi increased by 866 and UAE by 98 and Kuwait by 73, Iraq by 39. So you have uh, an increase in production of then. You add the 2 million on top of that, you're looking at 25.2. And the call on OPEC for the second half of this year is only 23.4, according to OPEC itself. So it looks like we're going to see a build in storage unless OPEC uh, reverses and uh, does another cutback. But in the meantime, everything is going to be focused on the what happens in the states in the flu season, what happens around the rest of the world where we're already seeing um, the second wave hit in uh, some parts in Europe. We're seeing it in New Zealand and other places. And that, of course, is uh, going to be negative for energy demand. And that's why I think between now and winter, we have a chance for a likelihood of um, lower prices than we are today. Of course, we're down about a buck uh, to, you know, about 4180 or so. Uh, but I think that we could see crude prices break 40 and potentially uh, go into the 30s. And the question is, how low do we go and do we break 30 um, if inventories are building at a, at a significant pace? And wave two of the COVID um, in the United States is uh, problematic, uh, which at this point, it's a bit early to, to know that. But mid-September through November is the window for uh, the flu season, and we'll see if that um, exacerbates the uh, present COVID problem, which, you know, I think, what is it, 176,000 people have passed away. And, you know, there's talking about 200,000 potentially um, fatalities before the U.S. election. So it's not looking very good uh, down south. And, and in Canada, we're even seeing some spikes um, in different places in Canada. We've had spikes in Alberta, um, in both Edmonton and Calgary recently. So, um, you know, people who are going out and not using masks, going to parties, uh, all of that is exacerbating uh, a, a difficult situation. U.S. exports of crude and product fell by 7 million barrels or over 1 million barrels a day this week. Why is that happening? Well, you've got a, a, a you know, the U.S. Tr uh, has had, had a deal with China, which was that they were going to import more natural gas and more crude oil and more products, but China hasn't abided by it, and Trump's busy with bashing uh, Kamala Harris and Joe Biden, so he's not really taking on China during this this time, and so um, the Chinese uh, imports of grain haven't happened. The Chinese imports of other things have, you know, that that, that they were supposed to do under the deal with uh, Trump 
is not happening. And other countries, of course, in Europe, which has been a buyer of American uh, crude and product, they're having weakening economies and and uh, and stuffed uh, you know storage channels, so they're not buying. So that really is uh, is 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 again a negative from a point of view of uh, consumption and pricing. And uh, to me, I think we're going to be busting 40 sometime in the next week or two on WTI. And then the question is, how low is low? And that'll be based on the health health situation, um, particularly in the United States. We'll have more with Joseph Schachter right after this. Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia and the Yukon. Trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the OTCQB, symbol ABNAF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. Engineer Gold Mines is focused on the exploration and development of the historic high-grade Engineer Gold Mine situated 32 kilometers southwest of Atlan, British Columbia. Engineer Gold Mines is fully permitted for surface and underground exploration with the drill program now underway. Engineer Gold Mines Limited trades on the TSX Venture Exchange symbol EAU. For more information, please visit us at engineergoldmines.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Joseph Schachter. Joseph, Saudi Arabia is saying they're cutting back exports to the U.S. to lower inventories. What's the theory behind that? Well, they want to tighten up U.S. inventories because it's the only one that, that people get to see on a weekly basis. So it's it's the most visual one out there. But um, the data that came out from the EIA kind of contradicts what, what OPEC is trying. You know, it's, it's like Trump. Uh, you know, here's what I say and here's what I do you know, which is two different things. But Saudi Arabia showed an increase last week of um, 142,000 barrels a day to 433,000, up from 291. They were the second largest uh, or or the third largest exporter into the U.S. um, market. And so that was part of that. You know, we mentioned that the exports had fallen um, and so uh, and imports uh, were, were lower. Um, and again, that relates to um, the you know the, the Saudi Arabia situation, where the, the Saudis want to be in the biggest market in the world, which is the U.S. They, they've already been shipping a lot to China uh, to fill the strate- strategic reserve in China. They've done that, and now China's demand is lowering. So the volumes that Saudi Arabia wants to sell, they need markets, and they've been going into the U.S. Even though they're saying that they want to tighten up U.S. inventory, so. It's uh, it's it's something you've got to keep an eye on on a weekly basis, and right now it's it's showing that you know what what Saudi Arabia is saying is not what Saudi Arabia is doing. The OPEC monthly report came out recently. What are the key items you took from it? Well, the the first is that uh, production went up in July when it wasn't supposed to. It was you know U.S. the production in OPEC was supposed to grow by two million starting August first. So by raising production by nine hundred and eighty thousand in the month of July. Um, that was, uh, pr- you know, problematic, and that's why I think the price cap around 43, 44 in the U.S. was the was, was what occurred. The other is we're seeing a lot of com- uh, countries cheating, um, not meeting their OPEC uh, commitment. Iraq and, and Nigeria are two of the most notable, and again, they're desperate. They have large uh, populations. They need all the money they can get. Iran, of course, is also trying to uh, ship exports through Malaysia and re uh, repositioning them as Malaysian crude so that you know that Malaysia can sell them so there's a lot of uh, excess production that, that that's going on uh, above what the official quota numbers are and so um, and Saudi Arabia in, in the or OPEC in the most recent report said that their assumption of demand growth uh in the second half of 2020 uh, is predicated on no wave 2 um, they think that the demand in 2020 for the whole year is going to be down by 9.1 million. But if there's a wave two, that would mean demand would be falling by 11.3 million barrels per day. And that would mean uh, clearly that there's a glut of oil on the world market if there's a wave two. And that would drive prices down potentially even below $30 a barrel. And again, the next few months will tell the tale of, of what's going to happen there. The U.S. rig count continues to fall, but in Canada it's going up. Why, and where do you see it going from here? 
Well, the first thing is the rig count uh, in Canada has been growing for a number of weeks here because the liquid-rich Montany um, has been doing well. Part of it is uh, ACO prices are about $2.58, which is a, a very good price, and, and uh, you're seeing uh, you know the natural gas producer stocks doing very well relative to the oily names. But the other, but this week's Baker Hughes report that came out um, just uh, you know 56 minutes ago showed for, for the first time in months the U.S. increased their number of rig count um, by 10 rigs um, to 254, but it's still down 72 percent from 916 a year ago. Canada showed an increase of two more rigs to 56. We're still down. Um, 60 percent from a year ago but we were up nicely and the big thing for the states was the uh, last week for example in Canada we had a seven um, well rig, uh, rig count increase and again it's the montany that uh, and the liquids rich nature there um, but the Permian Basin which has been decreasing week after week this week had a 10 rig increase to 127 but it's still down 71 percent from 434 a year ago. So this is the first uptick that we've seen in the U.S. rig count. We've seen four or five weeks now of Canadian rig count uptick. So this forty dollar level seems to be one where um, between the high natural gas prices and these forty dollar prices for crude, the industry is responding and and uh, and and spending more money and, and drilling again. That again is if we have any, you know, too much inventory, as I said, in the next month or two, that will probably slow the U.S. guys down, um, and they will probably stop uh, or reverse the, the the increase in rig activity if the price of oil goes into the 30s. You know, 40, 42 is is probably you know a profitable number for low cost producers. Um, if it goes down, you know, below 35. They probably won't make money, and then they'll stop, um, you know, the the activity level. And uh, but in Canada, if we, which liquids rich uh, companies in the natural gas sector, if we're looking at three three fifty for ACO during the winter of 2020 2021, they're going to pick up the pace of drilling, and the Canadian rig count will continue to improve. So, uh, we I think the worst is behind us on the Canadian side for um, the natural gas and liquids rich producers. Um, but I think that the uh, heavier oil, the thermal oil, the oil sands, the heavy oil uh, conventional business, if we see lower prices below 40 and, and even below 35, more importantly, uh, we'll see those, company, uh, those companies in that area lower their activity level and, uh, and shut in production uh, that's uneconomic, which, of course, we saw from the Q2 results. Many companies had shut in quite a bit of production, and we're saying that they needed U.S. dollar 50. Many of the conference calls I've been on, Companies I'm talking about increasing production north of fifty dollar WTI, and you know so um, you know the industry is still under some duress in Canada, and of course balance sheets are, are are in trouble. One of the positives for the Canadian side, though, is BDC lending has started. Uh, in play was the first to announce that they got money uh, and backing uh, potentially from uh, from BDC with their banks. So to me, that that that's the beginning of seeing uh, some financial support from the federal government coming to the industry. We'll have more with Joseph Schachter right after this. Value from success, growth, and discovery. Golden Arrow Resources is a well-funded gold copper exploration company with proven management and prospective properties in Chile, Argentina, and Paraguay. Golden Arrow trades on the Toronto Venture Exchange, symbol GRG, on Frankfurt, symbol G6A, and the OTCQB, symbol GARWF. For more information, visit us at goldenarrowresources.com or call Sean at 778-686-0135. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Joseph Schachter. Joseph, what's your outlook for crude and natural gas prices in the short one to three month term and long term one to three years? Well, in the short term, I think the uh, natural gas prices may back off a little, you know, once we get past the summer heating se- heat season and the air conditioning demand. Um, and then, of course, uh, I, you know, it may back off maybe 10, 20 percent from where it is now. As I mentioned, ACO was 258 today, so it could back off, you know, down to the low twos. But I think this winter we'll be looking at north of three dollars. So, and then I think heading out in the next two to three years, I think we'll be seeing even higher prices. 
because of underinvestment. And of course, LNG Canada is starting up in 2023, 2024, and that's going to uh, tighten things up uh, significantly. On the oil side, it really matters how quickly economies recover it and is there a wave two. I think that uh, the next few months with, uh, with, with the challenges of, uh, increased production by OPEC, uh, the, the shoulder season, uh, for demand and also the U.S. election, uh, concerns, uh, I think we're going to see lower prices, potentially below $30 for WTI. But I think heading into 2021, if there's a vaccine, we're going to see crude prices recover north of 50 and uh, potentially uh, we could see two to three years out to 70 or $80 WTI again. So I'm bullish on the long term for the sector, but I'm, I think that the fourth quarter we're going to see a severe correction like we saw in February, March, and tax loss selling season this year could be very nasty. A lot of people have made money in the, you know, the Internet of, of Things and the gold stocks have been very rewarding. And uh, so there's probably people with a lot of profits there. And if they owned energy stocks, they probably have a lot of losses. So you'll probably see, um, uh, you know, the no- mid-November to mid-December period be very difficult for the sector and a lot of profit taking uh, in other areas be- being offset by loss taking uh, in there in those industries where their stocks have been uh, under pressure for the year. How did your webinar on August 13th go? Well, it was very successful. We had, uh, you know, one of our highest attendances. We covered a lot of things, uh, second quarter results, why I'm cautious about the market. Uh, we talked about insider trading, like what's going on with company uh, share, you know, management, and are they buying or selling their shares. And one thing we put in was a new piece, which was an annual review of compensation. So companies, uh, you know, executives, how um, how much stock do they own relative to their base pay and their total comp package? And so we put that in there, and uh, and it's an annual thing that comes out with the management information circulars for the annual meetings. So uh, it really shows which companies are, are, you know, the management is shareholder friendly, and which ones the management is, uh, you know, are more like, uh, you know, bureaucrats because they love their their total package and they're not shareholders themselves. And that to me would be stocks you you don't want to own because if they're not willing to own the stock, why should you take the risk to own the stock? So if anyone, um, you know, is is interested, they can always go into our website and uh, and they you know go to the subscription page and then they can get access to the webinar um and we're um, you know we're going to have another one later this year we do four of them once a quarter our next one will be on uh, Thursday uh November 26th so um again we're trying to um, you know not only do uh we have a free product uh, which is the ion energy which we've talked about before which covers the macro events. We have two issues a month of the Schachter Energy Report, the interim report, and then the monthly, which covers the company stuff and, and the macro side. And then we have the webinar. So we have a you know total package there for people who are interested in the energy sector and energy individual security. So it's uh, we started this in April 2017, and it's uh, done very well. And uh, you know even though you know March to June was very rewarding for investors. Uh, more importantly, it's times when you need to tell people to be careful and hold cash uh, that that we're we're running our spurs that, that way anything new at the Schachter energy report well we as I mentioned the that uh, that piece we did on, on the insider holdings which we put into the of uh, the webinar um, we're 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 covering 28 companies we're looking to add two to three more and so we're looking around uh, the one the area that we, we're looking at is international names because Companies that have been successful internationally with the exploration drill bit, those stocks have done very well. And, um, you know, I think we're looking to find more of those. Um, and we're looking in South America. We're looking in Europe. Uh, and there's uh, names that are on our watch list. And I expect we'll be adding uh, new new investment ideas in the coming months. Joseph, thank you so much for chatting with us. My pleasure as always, Jim. Take good care and stay safe. My guest has been Joseph Schachter, founder of the Schachter Energy Report online at schachterenergyreport.ca. If you have any questions for Joseph or any of our other guests, you can send them to info at howstreet.com. Our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. Find us on Twitter at How Street. We're also on Facebook. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. 
HowStreet.com Radio is a production of Street Media Incorporated.